So we'll go live now. We'll go two minutes early. Yes. So it is live now. So everyone, I hope you are seeing us. I just it is. I'm just playing with the okay. So everyone, again, once again, if you can hear us okay, you can just say yes, setup is correct. Perfect. Pawan Kumar Akula. Pawan, you were there in the previous uh, previous live stream as well. So again, welcome, Pawan, Gianten. Uh, we started just two minutes early. That way you can... Okay. Get... Are, you, are you able to hear me as well? Can you please confirm if you can hear me as well? I mean, visible on the screen? No, right? You are, hold on, let me, let me see what's going on. So we can, uh, I just changed the view. Okay. So I think it should be visible, but, but you're right. Like in the, maybe it's a speaker view. I don't know. I need to play with the zoom setting a little bit. No worries. I think. I don't know. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, whoever, okay. whoever, whoever speaking is, is visible. So, so it's okay. That's good. That's exactly uh, is what we need, I guess. That's great. Many people are excited. I could see a lot of excited uh, people here. And uh, somebody is feeling great and confident. That's fantastic. And somebody is feeling not so good. We hope you are able to make your time slightly better than how you're feeling now. Hopefully. Uh, because this is a fun quiz, you will you will get to see some fun data related stuff. At the same time, also learn something out of that. And folks, uh, before we go ahead, in order to participate in this quiz, all you need is a cell phone. You don't need to go to slido.com. You don't need to build any profile, nothing. Use your cell phone and you are seeing the barcode on the screen. Just scan that barcode. Okay, just scan that barcode. It will give you a link. You click on that link and it will open the quiz in yes. the browser. The quiz is not live yet, yes. but at least it will open it. You will get ready. And then in a few minutes, we are going to start the quiz. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Someone is asking what to do, right? So you just open your camera, scan the barcode and it, some link will appear. You just click on the link and it will take you to this page. So the questions are not started yet. It's going to start. So I see 100 people are live, but only 56 people join. So the rest 41, you're going to watch the show or you're going to join. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is all free. Okay. It doesn't hurt in joining. So don't yes, worry. And there is an exciting price at the end. You yes. don't want to miss that. There's an exciting pricing price. So whoever is live, we suggest all of you join the quiz. It's not like we are not going to, let's say some people might have this inferiority complex that, okay, if we don't, don't score high, our name will be visible. No, at the end of the day, the top two or three winners name will be visible. Rena remaining people's scores are not going to be visible to anyone. So don't worry, folks, you can just participate. Okay. So take your cell phone, open the camera point the camera to the QR code, which is right there in the screen. You see on the left hand side, left top, you see a barcode. Scan that barcode. Once you scan the barcode, you will see a browser link. It will show you a little link based on your phone. Click on that link. Once you click on that link, it will open Slido in the browser. You type in your name. Okay. Type Try to type in your full name if possible or some code name, but like a good name, full name uh, would be nice. And then it will ask you some icebreaker question, like how you're feeling today, etc. And in a few minutes, we are going to start the real quiz, folks. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be super fun. You will see. We'll go question by question. You will answer them one by one. And then at the end of end of the quiz will declare winners and there will be prizes this is just a fun session okay you all will have fun and and we are ensuring you we are not going to ask you very very hard question okay it will yes, be either the, 
Yeah, this is a very very basic quiz, guys. You know, you, you can all join. You know, like even if you are something, even if you are someone who just heard about data, you can join on this quiz. That's completely fine. Or half. Uh, I, I I need ten more people to start. Come on. We have we have ninety two now. I need ten more. Yes. Once we have hundred people, we'll start. There are hundred and six watching. So those remaining ten or fifteen people, folks. we are holding up because of you let's get started yes 96 okay that's that's moving really fast that's good 97 yes yes we need three more to hit the century <laughs> 98 okay there we are yeah 100 100 and 100 we can start now so please remember you just you 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 need to answer the right question you will have 15 seconds to answer every question so the people who answer faster they they get to be on top of the leaderboard right so it's not it's important to also answer faster okay i'm going to move to the first question and yes and you can use google search whatever okay it's all up to you if you're fast enough if you're fast enough to do this we'll see how type how fast people can uh, type okay. in google search okay so we have got like all the beautiful names coming up you could find your your name there if you have joined yes vika sagar vasu tahe mahendra taslim ranjal tanusha prince kumar singh tanmoy deepak charan deva priyo see we have people from all around mostly i think yeah different places yes. yes good gender mix good good diversity that's great all right Gear up, folks! The first question is coming up. Which of these data science career pathways has the most number of job openings? Your time is running. All right, we have got the result. I'm quite surprised. We have got. Okay, let me show you the results, folks. Data analyst has. A... That's very interesting. What do you think about the answer? Fifteen percent people said, like seventy-two percent people said it's all of the above. What do you think about it? Yeah, so this shows that people probably don't have a good understanding of what's going on in the industry. The number of jobs. in data analyst positions are way higher than number of data engineer and data scientist jobs and this is because data analyst is a very generic role where first of all if you think about talent people from any domain can become data analyst right you don't need to have computer science degree or any specialized education for it there are some tools techniques you need to learn obviously and the other thing is there is more demand of descriptive analytics uh and uh, just doing a basic basic analytics of the data there is more demand yeah. of that rather than it's not like everyone is trying to build machine learning model so yes. for that reason if there is one data scientist job there are at least 10 data analyst jobs so now i don't know the exact statistics and numbers but that's my rough kind of understanding there are way more jobs in data analyst then in data scientist and i i see this mistake that a lot of people make who wants to who just hear this jargon okay ai ml and they all start learning ml and then don't know even basic statistics or basics let's say bi dashboarding or basic python so this is this this quiz uh, this question we design to kind of enlighten you on the on the ground reality yes yes all right so yes there is a lag between what you see on your mobile and what you see on the youtube because youtube takes few seconds to uh, relate so always focus on your mobile you know you can watch the video later perhaps yes and pawan kumar is asking um, there are uh, data scientist salary is higher yes pawan i agree i'm not saying becoming data scientist is bad i'm just saying number of job positions okay 
because I, I hear many people who are less a QA engineer, people who are from HR domain, and they want to become, uh, they want to join data science industry and they start learning ML directly. I think people, yeah. especially who are moving from a different domain, I always suggest them that they pursue, try to pursue data analyst role. Yeah. Once you're a data analyst, you can learn machine learning and always become data scientist. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's a perfect segue. You can become a data analyst and then move to data science scientist very easily. And it's the chances of you getting a job is much, much, much higher folks. As a data analyst, you can easily get a job. If you're trying to switch from another ca one career to another career, try for data analyst. That's easier. All right. Let's see for the 15 percentage of people. That's great. Pawan Kumar answered it really fast. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> Vasu, Jay, Asim Gandhi, and Satvik. Great. You guys are in the leaderboard. Let me go to the next question now. All right. Which of the skills is least required for a data analyst? So time is running now. That's a good mix of the answer. The <laughs> so what do you think about this? So, uh, but majority answered it correctly. That's, that's good. Okay. Are we, are we showing the right answer? Yes. Okay, folks. So machine learning is the right answer. Before we discuss the answer, I want to clarify uh, once again that there is a lag between what you're seeing on your Slido quiz and what you're hearing on YouTube because YouTube has this few minutes lag, but don't worry about that. Always focus on your Slido, okay? So always pay attention to your phone. The new question can come up at any time. The discussion you're hearing on YouTube has a delay of two minutes or so. So be attentive. So you can hear to our discussion on YouTube, but be attentive to your phone because the next question can come at any time. And how fast you answer that question will also decide if you can become winner or not. Okay. So becoming winner means two things. You need to answer correctly and you need to answer faster. Okay. Now, in terms of this question, data analysts, yes, people again think machine learning is something that they need to know. Hemanan himself uh, was a data analyst for many, many years. He led a team of data analysis and, and Hammond and did you ever use machine learning? No, no, I don't, I didn't have to. Yes, I could have used, but very rarely. Yep. So machine learning is something that is not required for data analysis. Of course you, you, you can learn it because that yes. can help, ha help you become data scientist. Yes. It's like data analyst plus machine learning skills yeah. is equal to data scientist. Like yeah, roughly just, speaking. Yes. Yes, I, that's why we said it's least required. We are not saying it's not, you won't use it as a data analyst. You can use it, but the, op the opportunities to use machine learning in your data analyst role is very, very less. All right. So who said 31% visualization? Guys, you, you can, <laughs> folks, you cannot <laughs> run the show without visualization in data analyst. Okay, always remember that. All right. Uh, okay, let's go to the next question and show the leaderboard. Okay, Pawan Kumar is still leading. Asim Gandhi is following. That's great. I'm going to the third question now. Python was created in which year? Okay, focus on your mobile guys. All right, that shows a lot of people answered it correctly. So 69% of you got it right. Yes, it's 1991 is the year that Python was created. And I happen to be born in the same year. Hamanan <laughs> <laughs> was born and Python was also born same year. <laughs> <laughs> so many right. people think many people think Python is a new language, but that's wrong. Python has been there since 1991, folks, 31 years now. 
So it's not like Python is a new language. It was there sitting around, not becoming popular. And all of a sudden it picked up due to a variety of reasons. Yes. And I'm also kind of surprised to see this 500 BC answer, 500 years before Christ. So some people are thinking it was born. <laughs> Maybe. I, I know, I know that, that, that learner is having fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe people are thinking about Python, the, the, the animal. <laughs> yeah, that was created millions of years back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or oh, somebody said KJ Bella could relate to hey, me and Python. Thanks. Thanks, Pavan. That's that's interesting. I'll use it. I'll use it somewhere. Since 1990. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me go to the next question and show the leaderboard. Okay. Asim Gandhi, I think he answered it quite quicker than Pavan and he, he's climbed up and Raghavendra Sangati is following up very closely. And we have Arshini who entered into the top five. New. Fantastic. All right, let's go to the next question. Folks, focus on your mobile all the time, please. Which Python library is mostly used for mathematical operations? And I think it's easy, right? You guys will answer it. Okay, <laughs> I think we got the answer. The majority got it right. Yes, it's NumPy is the most commonly used mathematical operations library. And we still have that person having fun who answered DF underscore final underscore final. <laughs> have fun, that's good for you. <laughs> yes. You want the people to have fun. This is fun quiz. <clears throat> All right. But I think the 10% of people who answered pandas, they might be thinking about the EDA, EDA options exploratory data analysis options. So that's more for analyzing your data, but it's not mathematical. So there is yes. a slight difference between this both. Yeah, there's a slight difference. And, and to be honest, pandas underneath uses NumPy. So in a way, people who said pandas, they're also kind of partially correct, although it's not the, the most accurate answer. But NumPy is a very efficient, memory optimized, faster, kind of almost like an array, array. Uh, built for performance and then pandas is built up on, on top of it. Okay. So I think pandas and numpy, both answers are correct, but numpy is probably more accurate. So you can use a lot of, you can do a lot of array manipulation. Let's say you are working on NLP problem and you want to find the cosine distance between the two document vectors. So that's when you will use numpy, right? You have two vectors in numpy and you all know that at the core of machine learning, we have vector and matrix manipulation. And yes. NumPy is at the crux of all of this. Yes. I want to answer one, one more question as, as in the chat. Someone asked me like, as a BI developer, how much of SQL is required? I would say not very much. I'm, I'm very careful when I'm saying this. You wouldn't need a lot of SQL when you are a BI developer. If you are a data analyst who is doing ad hoc analysis, then you would, I mean, SQL, learning SQL is really good. I would suggest that for everyone. It will form a perfect base for your data analyst career. But if you are a BI developer, right, you would focus, and, and if you're a Power BI developer, I can confidently say you don't need much of SQL. Hope that answers your question. All right, I'm going to the next question. And uh, Pawan Kumar is leading again. That's good, Pawan. Doing a great job. Okay, I think we have a new entrant, Rowan, in the top five. Going to the next question, folks, look into your mobile phone, please. What is Anaconda? <laughs> this will be a fun <laughs> question. <laughs> okay. Time's up. Wow, that's great. I think we've got around 90% of people answering it correctly. And- uh, But Amon, this is not fair, okay? The first answer is also correct. <laughs> no, we, we already established this is a data quiz. So okay. it's not, not <laughs> So I think- <laughs> If my wife think, is looking think, at this quiz, she'll be like, no, first, first answer is correct. Uh, you're wrong. Yeah. 
and i'll yeah. have to agree with her <laughs> yeah i think yes i was expecting some answers there but our people are very smart so <laughs> all right let's see great i think the leaderboard is still the same with jill devasia entering the top 5 fantastic all right going to the next question what is bi it's a very easy question now we want to slightly mellow it down i expect 100% on this one that's great 96% great and i think the board still is the same okay <laughs> okay someone asked me a question what is the difference between uh what is the role difference between a bi developer it's abhinav vashist bi developer and data analyst okay so a bi developer and a data analyst so bi developer is particularly focusing on the business intelligence bi is what business intelligence correct so the business has uh, has some uh, need some insight and the bi developer is providing that and they focus on a tool like power bi tableau and things like that a data analyst it does also the same thing but a data analyst could also is is a very generic term could also you know do some ad hoc analysis they might be using sql to do some ad hoc analysis and in some cases in in some occasions i have seen data analysts doing data engineering jobs so data analyst is most you know it's a very generic term these days you know like people hire for data analyst and they give them like staging data staging <coughs> jobs as well so that's 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 where uh, you know people some 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 people some companies call uh, you know call it out and call them as bi developers it's it's kind of a distinction within the data analyst role right but da- data analyst role is more challenging and fulfilling because bi developer is like you're doing just part of the the work you know if you think of data analyst as a whole pipeline you are just doing visualization part yes. whereas as a data analyst you are looking at the problem end to end so it is more fulfilling career data yes. analyst is a more fulfilling career than just yes. becoming a bi developer but 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 a very interesting anecdote mm-hmm. i have seen people who are bi developers but they are also involved in uh, project scoping you know like uh, scheduling the project timelines and all those things sometimes companies don't know exactly what they are hiring for they hire the people and they give them all kind of work that's 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 a common practice i'm not i'm not saying it doesn't happen it does happen but a uh, bi developer should be only focusing on developing uh, the insights uh, you know from from the you know from the specifications that is already gathered okay okay next. let me go to the next question dax language is associated with which power bi tool I think I said it myself. I said Power BI, so seventy six percent got it right. That's great. Power Query, yes. I know some people would answer Power Query. It was a twist that we had. Power Query is nothing but a part of Power BI. It's a feature in Power BI that will help you to transform the data, gather and transform the data. So Power Query is a part of Power BI, but you can also have Power Query in Excel. Power Query is basically a feature that Microsoft has created. All right, seventy-six percent of you got it right. Let's see the leaderboard. I'm curious. Oh, it's still the same. Okay, Tanusha Singh is up. Hmm. Okay, now, now, now it's getting tough. Yes. All right, I'm going to the next question now. What is the full form of CNN in data science context? folks we are testing your google search search uh, skills also okay <laughs> yes you're fast enough to do it in 15 seconds that's great 67% of you answered it correctly that's convolutional neural network convolutional neural network folks is a revolutionary invention i would say in terms of neural networks and if you it's i think one of the one of those difficult topics that you come across when you are training yourself on machine learning and deep learning especially 
So if you don't know what is convolutional net neural network, go to YouTube, search for code basics, convolutional neural network. I have made a video which even a high school kid can understand if you go through that video step by step. Of course, the topic itself is difficult. So you need to learn it by having patience. But if you watch that video, you will get an idea. And these advancements in neural network are bringing a lot of bright career opportunities for all of you. Number of jobs in computer vision, NLP are increasing. Many NLP starts up, startups are getting huge funding. For example, Hugging Face got a uh, big funding recently. And there are, I, I've been posting about all those NLP startups. Uh, and then on the other hand, CNN is used in medical, for example, in healthcare, right? In satellite imaginary. It's being used at so many different places. And convolutional neural network is at the heart of the image analytics or video analytics. So if you want to build a career in that particular domain, this is the topic that you must know. And you can start your journey of learning convolutional neural network with that video that we have on YouTube. Yes. And it's definitely one of the growing areas that you, that you can focus on right now. It is not fully matured, so it has a potential to grow even more. All right. Okay, let's see the leaderboard. Okay, not a surprise, it's still the same. I think we have got a new entrant, Ashe, in number five position, congratulations. Okay, moving to the next question now. Which of these is not a machine learning algorithm? I think the options in this one are really boring. You can go to next. Let's see what is the correct answer. Logic regression. Yes. Logic regression is not a machine learning algorithm. Yes. Folks, make sure you read the question properly because when, when we had this first question that which skill is least used in data analysis. Some people thought which skill is most used in it. So you have to kind of uh, just read the question properly. So yes, logic regression is something that, that's, that doesn't mean anything. We have linear regression that we use for regression type of issues. And then we have random forest support vector machine that we mainly use for classification. But many of these techniques are used both in regression and classification. And if you don't know, in the field of machine learning, classification and regression are kind of two broader category of problems that we try to solve. The third one is, of course, th these two are mainly in supervised learning. Okay, And when you talk about unsupervised learning, there is something called clustering that we use, use a lot. But in terms of supervised learning, two main branches are regression and classification. And linear regression is something we use for regression and the uh, random forest and support vector machine is something we use for classification. All right, let's see who is leading now. Oh, there is a surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Raghavendra, okay. congrats. Oh, I think uh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a bit of a change in the leaderboard. That's good. Let's keep the competition tight. We have six more questions, folks. So you still have a chance to get back where you are. Okay, a very easy question. Let's see who answers this fast. I hope everybody answers this in one second. Ninety-nine percent. That's great. Wow! And amazing. Percent. Okay, still having fun. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's see who answered it fast. So SQL is like I say, like we say, is the salt of data science, right? You can use it in data engineering. You can use it in data, data analysis, all of that. So if you are a complete fresher, I would recommend you to start learning SQL. And the great news is that we are coming up with a SQL course 
I have already recorded two chapters in that course. The course will be live in October. We don't have a date yet, mostly towards the end of the October. We are coming up with an amazing course. I know there are so many courses out there on SQL, so many great videos on YouTube. But what we are trying to do is very different. And when the course is out, you will know exactly. It will be very, very industry oriented course with project based learning. A lot of cool things. I don't want to open all the secrets right now. But when that course comes out, it will be very affordable. And it is, uh, I mean, I'll try to explain you SQL as if you're a kid in a very simple language. And then at the same time, we, we'll cover a lot of, lot of things which can be helpful uh, for you to, to get a job. And once you get a job, in order to shine for the job. So folks, if you're trying to learn SQL, and if you wait till October, I, I promise I, I'm going to deliver the best top-notch SQL course that you can ever have to learn this very important skill. Haman already said it is called the salt of data science. It's like you're in a kitchen, right? You're making different recipes. You're a data scientist, data engineer, data analyst. You make any recipe, you need SQL. And therefore, it becomes one of the top skills. Uh, yes. To become successful yes. in data For people who have taken our Power BI course, they know like the kind of creativity and uh, the the mm -hmm. inclusion of the the real time. Uh, you know, a lot of people say they felt like they were doing an internship in a company, right? So this SQL course will adopt that and even more. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. You're all excited for the SQL course. It's going to come up real soon. And uh, let me take one question before I go to the next question uh, on the quiz. So what do you think about PL300 certification? Is it worth it? Yes. It's respected. Microsoft certification is respected among the companies because Microsoft is highly recognized. Uh, if you say that you are Microsoft certified, uh, companies can easily know, right? They don't have to question the authority. Okay, Microsoft is good. But again, is it a must? I won't say it's not a must, right? If you are looking for certification, I would prefer this certification. But certification again is a is a parameter to reduce the competition, right? If two folks have the same profile. A folk with a certification will have a slightly upper weightage. That's that's the reason you need a certification. And for those who don't know, Hemana, you want to say what PL three hundred certification is about? Yes, PL three hundred certification is a certification on Microsoft Power BI. So they test, uh, you know, your your various Power BI skills. There are a few things I like about this exam because it's, uh, you know, it will help you prepare holistically on Power BI, it will cover all the parts of Power BI, which we have covered in our course. But the, the thing that I don't really like in this about this exam is like, it demands you to memorize some things. Like it yeah. asks you which button is that. I honestly don't know. I've worked in Power BI like ever since I know, and I don't <laughs> remember the buttons. I just go and click it intuitively. So these yeah. kind of things are, are, uh, are something that, that, that is there. You need to memorize some of the things, but it's okay. You know, if you're a fresher, if you memorize things, and you go to the interview, it will be easy for you to say about it. Maybe we can give this feedback to Microsoft. We have a few friends and- I've given, I've given. You're given, okay. Yeah, I do this exam every year. And hmm. even last month I did this exam and I gave this feedback. Okay. Awesome, let's move on to the next question. Okay. All right, still on top. Okay, Ashi, I think he, he joined the leaderboard recently and now he's climbing to number two. He, he looks like a dangerous player to me. Yes, and and by the way, this is all the the whole total score, right? Like the total. This is not just one question, but the entire. Yeah, this is the entire thing. This is. Yeah. I mean, it's what it says is like uh, Raghavendra. He answered ten out of ten, and he took one one minute and twenty nine seconds. So on the rest of the people, all answered nine out of ten, and you uh. can see the time difference. I think Harshini and Ashi are really close, and even hmm. Rohan for that case. I mean, all of them are really close. If yes. someone takes like few seconds, it it will change the table. Right. And, and folks, as you can see that uh, Ashay Harsini, they took 56 seconds, 59 seconds. They took less than Raghavendra, but Raghavendra answered all turn question correctly, although he took more time. So we initially said, right, like who wins depends on two factors. If you're answered the question correctly or not, and your timing, how much if you're taking less time to answer that question. All right, so, so far, Raghavendra uh, is leading and Ashay and Harshini are following up. So, folks, 
keep up the good performance. We have far, five more questions to go. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. How can we handle missing NAND values in data? So these are NA values sometimes because of data error, whatever, you don't have any values. How do you handle them? I can say I used to ignore them initially when I started. It's great. What's your take on this? I, I, I mean, if I am a beginner, I would say remove them. That's, that's also a closer thing to say. That, that's a closer thing to say. But see, in machine learning world, there is this saying that wasting data is a sin. And in Hindi language, data ko waste karna paap hai. So <laughs> if you have data, and if you try, try to make an attempt uh, so that you can use it for, your, so, for solving your problem. So your first attempt should be, how do I replace this? Okay, can I use mean, median? Can I use any other approach to derive the value based on the other columns that I have? And then you can also remove them. But let's say if the data values are very small percentage, let's say less than one percentage is NA. Even then I would suggest try to use it, but let's say you want to ignore it, that's also fine. But let's say 10% of your data values are NA. Ignoring them will be a sin. So we use all kinds of approaches to substitute the values. Okay, fantastic. All right, I'm going to go to the next question. So the correct answer is, yes, you put a mean mode. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, does it change? Oh, look at look at this now. This is interesting. Hmm. Arshini and Ashe, they both are in the same time. Wow, <laughs> we are having a tie, folks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> great. I think Deepak is in in the new and Asim. He was in the he was in the top before, if I remember it correctly. Good job, Asim, for coming back, claiming your throne. Okay, I'm going to the next question now. Which of these websites are a good place to practice SQL interview questions? You should know this if you are preparing yourself for interviews. And also if, if you're, you're following, following me on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> All right. Next, let's see what is the correct answer. Yes. What do you what do you think about people answering? I think lead code is I would say lead code is most famous among these three or the the oldest one among these uh, three. To be honest, lead code is more for coding questions, coding type of software engineering roles. Lead code has SQL question, database questions, but the platform is not built for that. So, in my opinion, the best platform is Data Lemur, which is something is newly launched then start a scratch and then lead code. I will go in that sequence. Yes. All right, so the, the correct answer is all of the above. And all of these are fantastic website folks. Just go and visit them. Like it's free, you know, you just, you just have to visit them and prepare, use them to prepare yourself for the interviews. These are really, really good resources. And folks, uh, I have been posting about these resources for interviews and resumes and all that on my LinkedIn. Hermann is also for posting a lot of insightful uh, post on LinkedIn. So please make sure you follow me and Hermann. If you want to learn from us, uh, our experiences on how do we interview people? How do you prepare for, let's say, this SQL interview question and so on. We are regularly posting a lot of useful content, which can help you all. Uh, in terms of your interview preparation. So I'm hitting my limit of 30,000 uh, connections. So don't send me a connection request because I won't be able to accept because I have already reached that limit. There is a button called follow. So you can follow us and you will find my profile in pretty much all of my videos. And I think Hermann's profile is also, if you search for Hermann Vadivel Code Basics in LinkedIn, you will find his profile. So LinkedIn posts are amazing. I mean, they can help you learn a lot of things. Yes. And this question was based on, based on my LinkedIn post. I, I posted on LinkedIn about this few days back. That's right. 
All right, let's check the leaderboard. I'm okay. That's okay. Still, Arshini is leading by one question. So, sorry, one second. That's interesting. I think Pavan Kumar came back. Very interesting. So, we are in almost the last three questions. That's like the finale, folks. We are, we are in, into the last three questions. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I'm excited as you are. Okay, let's talk about some visualization. Which chart is best suited to show sales of 10 customers? This is, this is probably not the easiest one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is an interesting area. I would like to talk about this. So yes, 27% of you answered pie chart. I would say never use a pie chart. Make this as a rule. Never use a pie chart. If you have more than three categories or more than four categories in, you know, to, to analyze. Because what happens is like it becomes clutter. You won't be able to understand what are those categories. The data labels won't fit. And, and there is a better option, which I will talk. The better option is a bar chart. Horizontal bar chart or vertical bar chart. Can you, so, can you click you know, on next button, Heman, so that people at least visually see which is the correct answer? Yes, I would do that. The correct <laughs> answer is horizontal bar chart. So bar chart is still a better, better option. Even if it's vertical or horizontal, it's still a better option than pie chart. But in horizontal bar chart, you would be able to see the ranking very easily. Like if there are 10, you know, 10 you know, countries, you can see the ranking. At the same time, you can also see the percentage. Like you can see the relative size of these countries using the horizontal bar chart. In a vertical bar chart, our brain is not tuned to see the ranking in a vertical bar chart. Only if it is one below other, you would be able to see the ranking. That's how the human brain is tuned. Human so brain is, is tuned to uh, consume vertical. When you are seeing uh, your entities in a vertical fashion, like left to right, that is more for a time scale. You know the years. But when you talk about horizontal bar chart, that is some sort of ranking. Yes. So now you know this. You can uh, you can surprise your your team with this. And uh, and and people who love pie charts, tell them if if the category is more than three, don't use pie chart. It, it is of no value. All right. Let's see the leaderboard. Wow, that's Harshan is leading number one now. Oh, I mean there are a lot of people in the pipeline. You could see that there's a completely new leaderboard now. I think Raghavendra, you know, I think he slipped off because he answered this question wrong. And uh, I'm sorry for you, Raghavendra, I think, but we have new people like Pranjal, mm -hmm. Lakshmaradi, Shahid. Fantastic, fantastic. So it, it seems like a tough competition, like six, seven, eight, nine is also kind of tough. They could also become number one. So Devo, we have two more questions. Debo Priya Saha is asking why not vert vertical bar chart? So vertical, vertical bar chart, see folks. Traditionally, if you look at all popular visualization, vertical bar charts, they are either used for categories. Let's say you have a geo, geo breakdown, uh, like geographical breakdown, or let's say product breakdown of any companies. Let's say you are looking at revenues from Apple. So there could be a bar chart for iPhone revenues, iPad revenues, and so on, right? So vertical bar chart is more suitable for that kind of use case. Or let's say Apple's geographical revenue, let's say Asia revenue, America revenue, whatever. The other purpose of vertical bar chart is, as I said, it for a time scale, let's say you want to go, go over year over year revenue of Apple. Okay, 2019, 2020, 2021, that's when you use vertical bar chart. But when you're talking about ranking things kind of comparing things so let's say i want to uh compare top 10 sales yeah sales 10 customers things like that horizontal is more suitable so devapriya you can use vertical i'm not saying you can't but this is the thing that we have seen very popular in in our own industry experience okay yeah i would that i would say instead of popular i would also say it's it's a best suited you okay. you, you should use I would say I would strongly recommend to use the vertical horizontal bar chart for, for situations like this. Yeah. So somebody is asking line chart. Yes, you can also use the line chart. But again, you know, like if you're showing a country and if you're showing a volume, like it, it should have a sales volume, right? A line chart does not denote that. Yes. So that's again, you know, it's not the best use. So you can use, you know, you can use all the charts. Basically, you know, you can use different things, but you need to understand the purpose 
and uh, the audience and, and 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 you know like and do it accordingly yes line chart is is best better for time series yeah line chart is exactly line chart is better for time series and and if it is representing the same measure but uh, but it, it has a time dimension right so let's say revenue revenue year over year yeah line chart is best but when you're talking about your top 10 sales right your top, top 10 customers these are discrete values right so I have sales from let's say Amazon versus eBay. These are like discrete values. And that line, the continuity that line chart represents can be misleading. So you will use separate bars so that you know these are like separate entities. Yes. All right. Okay, I'm going to the, the last two questions now. What is UAP? This is something people use in data analytics or you know data projects. Even software engineering, this is a popular thing. That's great. I think we have got a fair amount of people giving the right answer. That's user acceptance test. So this is this is something, you know, before we deploy a solution. So if you are a complete fresher, hear me out. So what happens is like, we normally deploy a solution in the company uh, to the users. And before implementing it to the wider user group, like there are thousand, 10,000 people in the company. So what we do is like, we pick some test users from the business and we give it for them to test. So we give a MVP. That's called the minimum viable product. We give a minimum viable product to these test users and ask them to approve. And we give a lot of different criteria, like okay, criteria A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, blah blah blah. And they check all of this and they approve. So once they approve, we deploy it to the production. That so user acceptance test is very important part of any any you know software or, or data project. And we have covered the whole. Uh, I think uh, an entire video on. UAT in our Power BI course. So again, if you want to learn data analytics folks uh, with a whole like end-to-end -end project uh, lifecycle management uh, understanding that that course is I think best. And uh, we still have scholarship available. You can go to YouTube, search Code Basics scholarship and whoever has made even a small attempt in, in getting that scholarship, we have given scholarship to all of them. Okay, so you can learn more about UAT uh, in that chapter too. You'll exactly understand that in data analytics pro project, end-to-end -end project, where exactly we use UAT and how does it help with your end product? Yes, that's right. That's right. So I am excited to see the uh, to see the leaderboard. Oh, wow. Okay, I think Deepak is in number one. Position. <laughs> we are that's having a, a twist. <laughs> that's, that's a new entrant. It's like it's almost like seeing this F1 race. You know, like suddenly, you know, uh, you see someone, someone passing through. That's that's fantastic. And uh, I think currently Deepak is in a very safe position because, yeah, because he's he has answered 13 out of 14 and 137. I think Lakshma Reddy can beat him probably if he yeah. if he does answer the next question right and fast. But don't answer it wrong, Lakshma Reddy. You might still be in the top five. Yes, top folks. Five people get next two questions are as important as uh, as uh, last two balls in yesterday's India Pakistan match. There is only one. <laughs> oh, there is one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is the last question. This is the last question. So whatever you are doing, just try to stay in the top five. The people who are not in the top five, just answer anything fast. You know, it might get your chances of getting to the top. Okay. All right. Let's go to the last question now. Okay, drum rolls. What is stakeholder management? This is again a very important concept in, in, you know, in data industry, data field. That's great. 91% answered it correctly. You want to go next to so that visual indication? Yes. Yep. Correct answer is managing the expectation with respect to overall impact of the project. So this is, I mean, I would say 
if there is one thing that can accelerate your career a lot in the data field, that is stakeholder management. It's not about being nice to the stakeholder. It's not about like, you know, like really buttering them. It's definitely not that. It's more <laughs> about <laughs> it's more about understanding the different stakeholders of a project, understanding their importance, understanding their interest, and managing them accordingly. This will take you a long way, folks. This is exactly what we have covered in our Power BI course as well. Like, like when you say Power BI course, it's it's a Power BI, but we covered a lot of data analytics concepts in it. A lot of things that will help you shine in your job. And uh, so again, stakeholder management, you can Google it. Uh, you will know more information on that. There is also something called a stakeholder matrix. Try to understand what is a stakeholder matrix as well. And Heaven, and uh, just, just since we are discussing this, uh, I'm sending you uh, my LinkedIn post in Zoom. So if you can open that quickly because your screen is shared. So let's let's talk about that a little more. If you can open that link. So folks, I posted on LinkedIn about this. Um, and if you scroll down, this is the image that Heman is talking about, okay? So see this metric, if you can scroll a little bit up, uh, I mean, so that, uh, yeah. So this image shows stakeholders' interest on, uh, on x-axis and their influence or power on the y-axis. So before going to stakeholder meeting or in generally in your project life cycle, if you have a good understanding of this metrics, right, where you know who is in which quadrant. So the people who have more influence, like C-level people, top managers, business managers, and who have bigger interest in your project, they are on top right quadrant. You want to make sure you engage them closely in your project. Then there are people who have more interest, but less power you want to give consideration to their request. These people will come to you. They will ask uh, you for new changes in your dashboard or your data science project or your machine learning model. You want to manage the expectation as per this quadrant, okay? And we have covered uh, in depth, how do you manage that expectation in our Power BI course? So for those who are coming to this for the first time, uh, Heman, if you can open codebasics.io, we can quickly show our Power BI course. I, we are calling it Power BI course, but it's not really Power BI. It's a data, anal data analytics course, along with a lot of project management nuances, along with domain knowledge in consumer goods industry. So this, this particular course has a lot of details on stakeholder management. And this question was in fact, based on what we covered uh, in this course, okay? So see, there is a implementing a stakeholder chapter and we have given exercises, solutions, so many things. And as I said, once again, the scholarships for this particular uh, course are still available. So if you, if you go to YouTube, search for, okay, can you quickly go to YouTube and show them Folks who think, let's say, 2,400 rupees is a big price. If you want to get 50% off on that, you need to earn. So we, Code Basics as a company, we have this concept of earning scholarship rather than giving something for free, okay? So you can earn that scholarship by working on a small assignment that we have given in that particular video. It's a very easy assignment, folks. Anyone who has worked on it, they all have received the scholarship. So just follow the rules and make an action and you can get that 50% off. All right, let's move to the quiz now and let's see who is the yes. winner. <laughs> we have kept them waiting. Yes, let's see who's the winner. Drum rolls. All right, drum rolls, ready. One, two, three. There All you right. go, Deepak. Nah. <laughs> oh man. Deepak, you won. Lakshmi, Shahid, Arshini, Pranjal Verma. Congratulations, all of you. You all are going to get a nice prize. Yes, what a thrilling match that was. Deepak was not there till I think 11, 12 question. He was not in top. Yeah, three he was he always just... there at number six. Just... <laughs> Dark horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Okay, that's uh, Sumit Raturi got eighth position. Fantastic. Don't worry, Sumit. We will, we will, we will try to do this more. And uh, so we were, we were also planning to do something more serious, like a serious quiz, we, you know, we'll let you know about that. 
And uh, so I would like to take one question on the chat. Hmm. So before that, we'll announce what the winners should do. So winners, uh, there is an email ID that you will find in the description. It's not updated right now. We will update it you know, in a while. The email ID is info at codebasics.io. Info at codebasics.io. Don't, you don't need to note it down. It should be updated in the description. So and I'm also, to... I'm also typing that in the live chat. So in the okay. live chat, I just posted the email ID info at codebasics.io. So all the winners, you need to send an email on this particular email ID with what details, Hamanan? Yeah, with, with the name. You know, we, we will just verify because we, we, we have those uh, winner details here. So you just send it with your name and uh, that's it. Like, and in the subject, in the sub, yeah, in the subject title, just say Slido quiz winner, colon, your name, and then send a screenshot of your, of your mobile phone, the quiz yeah, winner that you have. Needed. I think that's not needed. Like, okay, it's, it's not needed. All right. Yeah, cool. to verify. yeah, we can verify that if needed. Yeah. All right. That's, that's great. So the, so the hardest question is like, which of these data science career pathways has the most number of job openings? So guys, that should be the easiest for you if you are into the data analytics. So data analyst again is, has a lot of openings. And uh, so Sumit, don't cry in a corner. Come on, you, you, you got eight positions. That's not bad. So we will do one more. Okay, I, I want to take one question here where someone asked me, is it necessary to do Excel before doing Power BI? Let's keep it like this, okay? Is it necessary to learn how to, how to, you know, like how to, uh, you know, pedal a cycle, how to ride a cycle before riding a bike, before riding a motorbike? Do you think it's necessary? No, right? I know a lot of people who, who don't know how to ride a cycle, they are directly ride a motorcycle. But it makes your motorcycle journey a lot, lot, lot easier if you know how to drive a cycle. That's exactly the situation of Excel and Power BI. So if you know Excel, if you know some, just the basics of Excel, it's going to make your Power BI life a, a bit easier because Power BI is built on the familiarity of Excel. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. Do we, do we, do we take some more questions? Yeah, I think so. We have our next video in Folks, in, in next five minutes, we are going to have another video. And that video will be on the teachers who influence my life and Hamanan's life. That video, we will not be talking about data science, etc., but we'll be talking about even more important things, which is beyond data science or beyond your career, your life lessons. How do you become a good human being? And how do you become successful in your career with the life values that you build? So make sure you attend that video if you want to learn learn from our experiences and the teachers who influence us. So that video will go out in next five minutes. I really enjoyed the, this quiz a lot. Folks, so what do you think? Should we conduct more of such slider quizzes? Did you, did you think this was useful? Did you find you learned a few new things today? See, winning prizes is actually not a big thing, okay? I think it's not about winning prizes. It's about learning things and while learning things, having fun. So I hope you all had fun and you learned a few things new. And if you like this quiz and if you want to schedule more of such quizzes, let us know and we'll make arrangements and we'll definitely schedule more quizzes in the future. And by doing these quizzes, you will be able to learn a lot of things, a lot of new things. Yeah. I think we have a couple of questions. Let's ask. And so, okay, Shu Petal is asking what will winners get, get us gifts? So they will post it in LinkedIn. You will know it once they post yes. it, what they got as gift. So yes. It's a surprise. Yes. And, uh, and folks, uh, once uh, again, see, uh, I see like a lot of ad tech companies, you know, they hand out free laptops. They hand out two lakh rupees prize. Look, we don't believe in all of that. Okay. We are a small company. We don't have budget. And even if I had a budget, I will never do this kind of like extravagant gifts. Your real gift is your learning. You understand, right? Gift is one thing. Let's say I give you a laptop. That's one thing. But now what? But if I give you knowledge and if you train yourself, right? And if you are able to earn a hell lot of more money that you can buy 10 such laptops on your own, that is more valuable. Okay. 
So understand this thing, like right now in India and across the world, there are so many sales marketing gimmicks going on. People distribute free prizes and this spoil you. We don't believe in that. We are giving gift. It will be not very big price, very small, but that's just an appreciation token. It's just a token. Your real gift is your learning. Okay. Okay. I see another question being asked on is a bachelor degree really important? I, I mean, see, so there is a competition, right? Like people without bachelor degrees, you have to be ex exceptionally good. You, you have to open your, uh, you know, your, uh, your website, you know, you build your website, you, you do some exceptional demonstration there, then you don't need a bachelor certificate. I know, uh, I know a friend in is working in Zoho, like he's in a really good position and he does not have a bachelor degree. I, I know people like that, but he, he demonstrated extraordinary skill. And if you want to go in a regular stream where you apply to the companies, then of course they are going to ask for degrees because that's, that's the only way they can filter people out with, with a lot of applications. So if you don't have a bachelor degree, do not worry, but create a brand for yourself, create a website, create a portfolio and, uh, you know, take help from people like us, uh, you know, where we give some free portfolio projects and things like that. And there are a lot of, you know, things happening there are a lot of free information available online you can benefit from that and and you know like prepare yourself all right folks in about one minute we have one more video coming up on the teachers who influenced us yeah so let me post a link of that so in the live stream i'm posting a link i'm posting a link and Let's join that video. Um, we are going to now disconnect now. We, we will be scheduling more live quizzes, slide or quizzes like this. So if you want to get notified, you can subscribe to Code Basics YouTube channel, hit notification icon because we post uh, these kind of things on YouTube community post. And if you have notification on, you will get to know about it. Also, you can follow my LinkedIn, Hemans LinkedIn. These are the three platforms that we, two platforms we mainly use to announce these quizzes. Okay. So... So let's let's go watch this next video, which is teachers who influenced us again. I'm going to post a link of that video in our live chat. All right. Thank you all. Bye bye. And once again, congratulations bye -bye. to winners. Really pleasure. Okay, bye. bye.